Uh, there was a back in the days when Russia just formed as the state. Uh, there was a famous General Lebedev. He was famous to be present in both Chechen wars that Russia had. He has a famous quote. You can just see it in YouTube too. Uh, he states that if you would go ask any general, they will tell you that the war is the worst thing that can happen to the humanity. The other bad part is that over time war turned to the very profitable business especially countries with heavily organized military industrial complex are benefiting from the war uh, as a business unfortunately and this is something that is a tragedy in my opinion um, the other thing that was mentioned is that uh, there's a uh, the corruption pretty much goes times 10 at the times of the war and that's also makes certain people profitable and not interested in having the war finished now a little bit about the precaution who you see and the results of the war so we can see the results of the war already uh, if you've been visiting Europe after the Syrian war you can see like Syrian people everywhere it looked very tragically especially you know kids sleeping on the street begging so many people innocent people dying same is in Ukraine now. So of course, the Europe was more tolerant to Ukrainians, but generally speaking, it will be spread all over the world right now. People will, you know, left with their, without their houses. Lots of people injured, damaged, handicapped. Lots of innocent people passing away. This is tragic, and of course, economic uh, consequences. Regarding Prigozhin, this is a, if you don't know, this was a guy who was trying to do. He was the guy that was trying to do recent revolution that didn't happen actually in Kremlin. The guy has really weird story. So he was arrested for the gang affiliation when he was young and then somehow in 90s early 90s he got to start some businesses one of the biggest businesses of precaution was the restaurant on the huge cruise ship that Russian president Vladimir Putin liked to visit and the he actually spent his one of his birthdays there had some official state members visiting that place eventually somehow Prigozhin decided to start war business warfare company called Wagner they deployed their first operations in Syria the weirdest part is that Russian constitution does not allow any private armies to be formed obviously he was backed by governments uh, they kind of closed the eyes to what he was doing so those guys after Syria decided to go to the uh, African countries um, to be stepping aside on some sides because uh, most of the African countries they have minorities that are constantly having wars and they pretty much agreed to defend them in exchange of their resources like oil petroleum some other valuable resources this is how those guys became strong but it got even weirder so after the war started in Ukraine uh, the Russian government decided to deploy those guys to the war since there was obviously not enough soldiers with the Wagner they decided to recruit people from the uh, penitentiaries penitentiaries jails and there are videos all over the internet where the Prigozhin himself visit the jails and in Russia and he says offers people to come to be in the war get paid live better life obviously and after six months they're free to they're going to be uh, pretty much free forgiven and uh, they can continue staying or they can just leave the whole government there is a movie uh, there is a saying that uh, the whole history of the USSR was the war between the party and KGB where KGB eventually won it's pretty much impossible nowadays it's called FSB Russia's Federal Security Service to do big business in Russia without being connected to FSB. You, however, have as long or complex history as Russia's Federal Security Service. So the whole thing with Prigozhin is pretty weird, especially the ending where he was trying to overthrow the government. But I think it was mostly the elites of Russia who were trying to get more power. But he ended up running to Belarus and he's hiding somewhere in Belarus. I don't think that he, this, he will survive after that. Some people see this overthrowing attempt as the weakness of Russia, but I think that it's making people in politics compare Russia to beer. And the beer that is bleeding is much more dangerous than beer that 
that is not bleeding or is in normal condition so i believe that even makes russia even more dangerous considering that they have nukes my prediction is that war since there was like a counteroffensive started by ukrainian and they are not getting in you know any significant results it's going to pretty much end where it's now right now the whole thing with the story of the war is unpredictable because i made a video a couple uh, days before the war started stating that i don't believe that it will start but the weirdest part is that previous president of ukraine you can just watch it on youtube search for this video is there Viktor yushenko he was asked if he thinks that there will be a war a couple days before the war started and that guy even said that he doesn't believe that there will be a war my prediction is that the war will end with no one's victory so pretty much the troops will stay where they are right now lots of losses for both sides and it's going to be one of the biggest tragedies that we face in our lifetime unfortunately in my opinion the best way to stop the war is just uh, have someone enforce both parties to start to negotiate with each other because when the war started the ukrainian side was eager to negotiate russian style but russian party was more like in into put our own puppet government in Ukraine. Now the story has changed. Russians uh, realized that you know they're not going to achieve any results. They're going to get even more losses. So they're more open to negotiations. I think Russia would be able to offer something to, for the negotiations on the table. But the hardest part is that Russia recognized the current occupied territories as their own territory. But of course there was some kind of technicality. I think that can be reconsidered. But definitely both sides need to come to the table. Unfortunately, there is no party that is really interested. I mean, the biggest player, United States, China, are interested in the, the war to be ended. So that makes things complicated. Anyways, I wish the best to the Ukrainians, all my Ukrainian friends. I hope this war will send and as soon as possible. I'm doing my best to uh, contribute. Hope you guys like this video. It really helps me to make this type of videos. Looking forward to hear from you. Don't forget to like, subscribe.